Hi everyone, so here is Moonlight Soul and Marisa from Growing the Flow and we are meeting for stars and cards. However, this time we're going to do things a little bit differently. Hi Marisa, how are you? Hi Mila, I'm good. Keeping busy over here as I know you are too, <laughs> doing all the things. So we're just switching it up here. We're making it happen in the nooks and the crannies and we're just going to kind of reflect on and project into this month of September, post Virgo new moon. Yeah, we're making some adjustments because we're thinking how to best utilize our our wisdom and energies. So yeah, so there might be more surprises down the line. So stay tuned. But yeah, this time we're going to focus on the energies of September. So let's see what's going to come out. Yeah, I love it. So actually, I just realized we don't have our Queen of the Moon Oracle. So we can just go right into pulling the tarot if we want, or yeah, and save the oracle card for the end. What do you think? Does that work? Let's start with the oracle card because okay. it's a very yeah, interesting gonna, yeah, deck. So we yeah. might see what's going to happen and then we'll see if we like need... a Yeah. And then we'll see if we need anything else at the end. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. So we're going to do the Sacred Destiny by Denise Lynn. We're going to pull that just with this intention collectively for some insight and guidance into the month of September. And when we do our three card spread, we're thinking about beginning, middle and end of the month of September. But of course, time is not linear. So these, these cards will all be working together with these energies and the stars, of course. Yeah, the because month, we so. just had the Virgo new moon and now we full stream ahead towards the eclipses. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I had a delayed reaction to the Virgo new moon because like yesterday I was more in the, you know, being a little hyper self-critical, you know, that aspect of Virgo. And then today I just was knocking out my to-do list, getting things done. And I was like, where did, where did she come from? <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be the, you know, the Venus conjunct of its south node and now moon moved into a sign of Libra. So, you know, it's all about this balancing, you know, let's mm. get think of our schedules. And yeah, Mars is actually moving into Cancer as we speak. Mm. So, yeah. Happening. Yeah, I felt like there were so many things when I was doing the empowerment pack, um, the astrological weather, it was like so many things, first, third, fourth, like, oh, you know, a second, of course, depending on where you are in the world with the moon, it was just busy right up, right up front. Okay, what's coming in? Ooh, leadership. With the oh, I've seen this card. Didn't we yeah, once pull it before? I'm not sure, but I know I've seen this card before, this leadership. Yeah. Taking a charge. Yeah, that's really beautiful. Um, it's making me think I I was I'm pulling cards from the um Chinese five elements, and one of the cards that came forward was Ursa Major, and it was a constellation to speak to um the uh actually i think it was the queen of wands was the energy that it was depicting so that's i'm seeing this polar bear and i'm seeing the night sky and it's reminding me that just this morning i was tapping into this energy of this the mythos of ursa major and then uh constellations but leadership comes in so there is this sense of with the leadership, I'm getting like ownership, right? So like take, mm -hmm. taking the lead, but also taking ownership, which I think is some of that Saturnian influence oh, yeah. <laughs> coming in too, about our role that we're playing in whatever it is that we have an opportunity to step in and lead, you know, through as far as taking ownership and through the taking of ownership and accountability, which is all buzzwords we've been saying the last few months, that we then can step into a place of leadership, you know, to, to step into that. Right. Oh, and yeah, it's interesting because as we know, and I know you mentioned it in uh, your um, videos about this Virgo new moon, uh, the Saturn was active. It was actually opposing it. And we just had a discussion shortly before starting recording that actually in February, where we had the full moon in Virgo, 
the previous Virgo moon, uh, we had the Sun Saturn conjunction on February 28th. And I literally just it popped up for me that as you know, as this card came out with the leadership, because you know, Mars usually Emperor, as we know, I don't particularly agree with that, but Emperor is being connected to this uh Mars Aries energy, Aries energy, because for me it's more like Mars and Capricorn. But either way, you know, leadership um with regards to who we are becoming because as of now mars is in the sign of cancer we know mars will have the retrograde at the end of the year so it will move from leo back into the sign of cancer so we'll have also beginning of 2025 mars in cancer and while mars in, in cancer it's actually going to try and saturn so what this is saying to me especially with this opposition we had during this new moon in virgo is that the adjustments that uh are being made in our life just like you said ownership we need to take responsibility and we need to change this way we identify ourselves, which is this like a victim of circumstances or like, you know, like reacting to situation rather than, you know, like, um, like a child, you know, because it's the cancer like this, you know, like, do we feel safe and secure to step up for ourselves? So this is kind of what's very strongly like came to me with regards to this Mars coming into Capricorn, Capricorn, sorry, cancer, and it's going to make a trine to Saturn in Pisces which is that we need to let go of this identity where we are not in charge of our life and destiny. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely feeling that. It is like it's taking the lead. Um, it's taking ownership first in order to lead, like from which place am I leading? You know, because, and we've talked before about fake it till you make it versus face it till you make it. Like there's some things that like maybe I shouldn't be in charge of in my life because it's maybe not my, you know, but there's things where, you know, we have this opportunity, I think, to take responsibility and then be a leader in, you know, when there is this victim of circumstance or this blame shifting that goes on, it's like, it's, it's putting the power outside of ourselves to say, well, I'll get going on that and take that once you do X, Y, and Z, or yeah, once yeah. conditions arrive or whatever it is that we then are able to procrastinate and postpone or I mean getting to my sneaky peas there like my you know that and oh they always come around for me in Virgo season because of the perfectionista but you know people pleasing perfectionism and uh, procrastination you know those things that tend to go together when we are in a disempowered state when we're putting yeah. our power outside of us so it also feels like you know bringing that back in and taking the reins there to take some some steps in that direction it's kind of interesting also because this a uh, bear it's 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 kind of like transparent isn't it it's not like fully mm -hmm. fully formed isn't it yeah it's sort of like like streaking across like the way yeah, that it's it... kind of like it's not yeah. fully manifested which is you know this is exactly what i mean with the mars going into sign of cancer and Mars being the rule of the North Node, which is all about what we are becoming, where we are heading, which is this new beginning, new direction. Mars going into the sign of Cancer and is going to try and this Saturn and then eventually Neptune as well. Uh, it's about letting go of these old versions of ourselves, but we don't, most of us don't see ourselves as leader, as a conscious creator of reality. So that's why this bear, this polar bear seems like elusive. That yeah. is there, but it's not there. Like, oh yeah, I maybe I could be that, but I don't think it's me. Maybe it's the other person that is not available to me. So I feel many of us are now in this transitionary period, you know, like Virgo, you know, learning and adjusting, where we realize that in order for me to have the reality I want to be experiencing, I need to do something for it. I need to do something about it. You know, I need to become a frequential match to this reality. But many of us are struggling with these old versions of ourselves that kept us safe and protected until this point by. Uh, not letting us become that because it's maybe too too scary to be you know in charge in a headlight or whatever so that's what i feel like these these leadership qualities are something that we are being offered to or we know that it's in some way inevitable but it's elusive at the moment it's kind of like foggy how are we gonna get there what does it look like how can i become that so mm -hmm. this is what I really feel that this Mars in Cancer, then Leo, and then back in Cancer, and then back in Leo is going to help us to work out. Yeah, it's like a hologram kind of. And yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, it's elusive, but it's also like just coming into focus where I'm, I'm now tapping into like the strength energy for this year with the strength card and like taming that beast. But there's this sense of like that inner bear within us that we have mm -hmm. the ability at all times to embrace and when you bring that in and you integrate it 
with your higher self that there's this sense of being being able to take that position of rightfully of the leadership of your own destiny of your own mm -hmm. journey that you're taking so that it's actually too like elusive but also starting to come into the picture where we're really able to sort of tap into that inner polar bear uh within to really harness that and when i say face it until you make it it's like face those aspects of yourself face those parts that maybe are that you know th with the strength card it gets that rep of like oh it's the shadow side the wild untamed part that needs to come to heal but like yeah face that until you make it because you there is much to be learned there there's wisdom to be gleaned there's healing within facing those aspects things that might scare us or that we feel um powerless against but actually it's all one and the same it is us so mm -hmm. there's this this coming together there in that that way too and it's interesting that you said the um like what I heard when you said the bear, you know, was like a mama bear, you know, that's usually what we identify bear with, like mama bear, you know, takes care of the cups and, you know, like, yes, elusive, but now the other aspect of it that I got is the visioning, you know, mm -hmm. also it's all Neptune, you know, elusive, you know, it's like uh, hologram, confusing, illusion, whatever, but also the vision. And I feel the, the, the bear, you know, like <laughs> it doesn't get lost on me that why is it a bear on that picture? Why is it not something else? Because it's about the reparenting of, of this aspect of ourselves, you know, this, this ego, you know, this beast within, this aspect of ourselves that uh, became the way they became because it was necessary to survive coping mechanism you know adaptation and stuff to our environment because of the trauma and whatever so you know again this mama bear you know we need to reparent ourselves these uh, shadow aspects of ourselves that are the way they are and they became the way they became in order to protect us but now it's like well do we want to keep stu stuck in the same loop to be protected from this potential of what we can become so it's a matter of again like being aware accepting okay yeah this is me let's let's face it just like you said let's face it and then we can see what we can do with it yeah it's so funny because like i said ursa major which to me is like the mother bear it's a minor and it's like all these symbols that were coming in all day and then the other part which again obscure reference only for oracle card nerds is i was seeing this as like the leg up card in the wisdom oh, of yeah, the yeah, oracle. yeah 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 with the baby polar bear and the mother polar bear. And I love that visual of it's both. We are both. We have both within us. And so there is this, this reparenting and this, this leg up, this boost that we get to, to, to rightfully step into this place of leadership that's available now. So there's definitely that like archetype, of course, as you say, with the cancer energy coming in there with the mother archetype of parent, the, the mother bear and the parenting, as well as the, um, the network of allowing those those things to give you the boost to help you to to get there you know so utilizing all of that too so yeah it's like i really feel this mars moving into cancer like big time because cancer is a cardinal sign so having a mars in <laughs> this is so funny because you know during the solar eclipse in aries which we kept mentioning many many times because Aries is the cardinal sign, you know, it was the equinox, it was the beginning of the zodiacal year and blah, 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 right after the Chinese year that, you know, you've been mentioning. <laughs> and uh, Mars was in Pisces, which was the mutable sign. And isn't that interesting that we are in a Virgo, which is a mutable sign, but Mars is moving into Cancer, which is a cardinal sign. So it's like a switch. Hmm. you know it's a switch we've gone from yeah. cardinal season to mutable Mars, which is saying, okay, the currents are changing, but we not, don't don't quite know how it's going to look like, where we're going with that. And now we are we are in a season of the change, Virgo. You know, Mars just came from the from Gemini, which is the mutable sign. And then Mars is like, okay, yeah, now this new moon in Virgo was planted. You know, the seeds have been planted for this upcoming era, learning the Justin Hero journey, the new era of humanity. And now it means that we have to start becoming different versions of ourselves because we cannot create this new reality and experience reality differently if we, if we keep uh, being attached to the old identities. It doesn't work. In order yeah. to experience, this is the teaching of Dr. Joe Dispenza, in order to experience a different reality, you need a different personality. You cannot be rich and have, have a poor person's mentality. You know, mm -hmm. we cannot feel abundant while we feel luck. 
it's just mm. it doesn't work right yeah. so this this card is so it's so funny because we look at one simple card and we can go into <laughs> rabbit holes i know and i don't even know what the book has to say about it but it doesn't even matter because it's definitely setting this tone for some of these overarching themes that we can expect to be navigating this month so let's bring our tarot cards in. yeah let's see what happens <laughs> What we're looking at with the beginning, middle, and end of September. That's so at the bottom of the deck when you picked it up was a sacral chakra. So let's see what yeah, we're well, creating. That's because, you know, I was saying I use this deck for my new moon and Virgo reading and that card came up. The mm -hmm. sacral chakra came up in that spread and I, it was the last card that I put back in here to shuffle up and, uh, and tap in anew for some guidance. Ooh, got a little wink there from the high priestess listen <laughs> so, let's see we got the beginning of the month here and now already in progress somehow it's crazy because we started back to school this week we had um a holiday weekend so it's one of those weeks where you feel like it's a day earlier than it actually is so it feels like tuesday for me but we're recording this on wednesday <laughs> I am so confused because as you know, yeah. I'm getting ready for my transition. So I'm like, I don't even know where I am anymore. <laughs> I know it's, it's crazy. The time. All right. Let's see. Beginning of September. We got Ooh, three, three of, of cups, right? Share the love. Okay. There we go. And then we have the middle of the month. Well, it's, it will um, be heading towards the eclipse. Four of pentacles, pentacles. right? Mm -hmm. mm. Getting into eclipse, yeah. And then we have end of the month on the other side. That will be getting ready for the Libra eclipse, which is on October 2nd. Libra season. Let's see. End of the month. Ah, oh yeah, <laughs> justice, right? Talk about those scales getting balanced. Talking okay, about the Libra, right? right? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. So right here and now we have the three of cups, which share the love. One thing that's interesting about this version is, and it does always give me my Chiron vibes because of that heart in the center that you can kind of see that. Mm. Um, the breakage but there's light shining through and that mm -hmm. it's interesting that even though this is a card that typically depicts three women usually mm -hmm. but three people or community and gathering and coming together there's two people that you see in the oh, shadow yeah. you know back here so then it brings us into like a um, duality of perhaps divine masculine and feminine or something where there's this share the love and we have this hand outstretched hand with that heart there where there's a healing, there's healing going on. And there's sort of, it feels like it's really illuminating things. It's shining a spotlight on perhaps those relationships and places where there could be disharmony or a call for healing. Um, and this can be, you know, all kinds of relationships because of course the three of cups is typically about, you know, gathering and, and in some cases we're celebrating and toasting and, and that type of energy, but just uniquely the way it's depicted here. I see this, um, there's a healing and there's like an illumination happening of areas that are coming up for healing. Mm. And it's interesting that, you know, like you said, there are two people and normally they are free and it's like, well, one and one makes two, three. <laughs> like yeah. one, one, one plus one equals three, right? This is like how it's gone, how, how it's done. So anyway, but I really feel that it's like, again, when we take it into the context of this uh, new moon in Virgo that started the month with the bank, you know, and it's like about this. And I know the number three has been coming up for, for us a lot. I know that, you know, the, the empress has been coming up for you as well which is about, you know, like us putting the seeds in, you know, to nurture, to create. But I also feel that this is like, uh, again, connected uh, to this new moon in Virgo, like what we are seeding is this new way of connecting to one another, you know, which is like uh, vulnerability, you know, like this, this heart-centered consciousness that rather than um, having this wall around ourselves, which are a response to trauma, it's like, you know, like making ourselves vulnerable because, you know, like when we said 
previously that when we uh, speak to people's ego, we will never win. We will never win that argument because, and there is no winning. It's like, you know, five of swords, like winning, but at which cost? Nobody really feels like a winner, right? Uh, but it's like with this uh, connecting through the heart. So I feel that this is, again, very significant with regards to this energy of uh, the change we are seeding with this Virgo, Virgo new moon, Virgo season, you know, with everything else that's going on, you know, with this Mars Cancer and all the rest of it, this very different way of identifying ourselves, identifying one another and connecting. How are we going to be connecting going forward? Mm. Yeah, with and with more vulnerability, authenticity, and, um, you know, the open hand has been a symbol that's been coming up a lot. We've been getting a lot of aces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, this week um, in the Empowerment Sharecast, when we tapped into our collective energies, it kicked off with an ace of pentacles, which was really perfect because it was on the new moon day. And, you know, that coin of sort of that seed, that offering. And um, I was showing, because it was a different deck, that the traditional tarot decks, the aces, you see a hand, right? Mm -hmm. And then whatever suit we're in, there is an offering, there's a new beginning, there's this new energy coming in. But the other part of that is that we have to take it. We have to receive yeah. it. We have to allow that to come in and be open to receiving it, which perfectly goes into this card because this is called, you know, open up because it's the four of pentacles where there's this rigid holding on and mm -hmm. attempt to control and in some cases hoard or hold on that I often give that analogy of like, if I'm holding everything really tightly, I can't pick up anything new. Exactly. I can't receive this beautiful offering because I'm rigidly holding on to this old belief, this old hurt, this whatever it is, that there's this open up coming in, this offering, this opening that's being um, made available, but it does require on our part to receive. And so this definitely being the cups energy as well as connecting us into that, you know, feminine energy of the, the water and the heart and emotions and flow and being in the state of receptivity as well um, that, you know, I feel that right here and now in the beginning of the month, we're, we're, we're being shown these areas where there's this opportunity to create new connections and relationships through the old hurts. Because like I said, that heart in the hand reminds me of like that broken pottery that's been repaired to be made something new and beautiful through its wounding through the scars, you know, and we're wearing those openly, like there's an openness to connect and come together in community, you know, scars and all, and, and being able to, to find, you know, within those places and, you know, bringing in that sense of, you know, what we can learn from others and the whole leg up and leadership opportunities to be the first one to make it okay to come in in a vulnerable way that's less than perfect and completely whole and healed in that way. Which takes courage because a lot mm -hmm. of times we think that our vulnerability makes us weak, but actually it takes huge courage to, to be all vulnerable. And it's interesting with these four of pentacles, what came to me, because when I was studying tarot, there was something interesting that my teacher said, which was like this card, very often, I don't remember if it was in connection with a different card, and I don't think it really matters, but he said that many times this card comes up when people are saving to buy house, you know, mm -hmm. like, because four is like the stability, the Saturn, you know, the house, the, the four, you know, the four walls, the structure of the house, right? So this is so perfect because this is what we are doing you know we are uh, like this you know free of caps like we are we, we have to learn also free is about you know like um, gemini house which is the learning you know the educational system the primary school you know we learning to connect in a different way you know like kindergarten primary school you know like hey you know like how are we connecting with this world you know like coming from your house house my house and now suddenly we are there in the world yes so it's like this free of caps like opening uh, ourselves to connecting in a different way through this heart through vulnerability we are all wounded in one way or another uh, so it's like okay you know like <laughs> here i am <laughs> your scars and all and that is creating that is like uh, we saving we are um creating this investment this 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 uh yeah like saving we we, we put in this um to invest into something that's going to create a new structure of reality so we are preparing these assets. This is an asset that is going to create this 
different reality if you're going to be you know experiencing and building the structure of the you know upcoming uh, times on and then then perfectly ties into the last card which is about the balance because this is what's needed to balance the disconnected way of existing on this planet for such a long time we are like like they say that we've never been more connected due to social media and technology but there there's never been so many lonely people in the world you know, we, we have the opportunity to connect in a way that was never possible for us before, but people never felt more, have never felt more disconnected than they do now. People feel very alone. So the, the cards are like, it's just, it's just perfect. And, and detached, right? Because that's actually the, the key word on this um, card as well. But yeah, definitely um, that four of pentacles is reminding me of a lot of the breadcrumbs that were coming up this week because I was saying of that ace of pentacles, like the seed money, that initial startup capital that we invest in something new that we're building. And so there's just so many things because it's like, you know, we keep having the opportunity to embrace the knowing that like what we associate with what is valuable and what, you know, when we talk about all the pentacles being um, earth, tangible material. It's it's not just money, but it's what those commodities are, what those things we have to build with. What do I have to build with? And so recognizing that so much of the traumas and the wounding and all those stories that we bring with us, they have a value, you know, and that if we can change the way, the perspective in which we look at those things, that we can find the innate value in those things and reinvest you know, because it's, it's like, we're um, trying to think of like financial terms, which I'm not very skilled on, but it's like, um, you know, transferring it, we're, 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 we're taking it from one form and we're turning it into another that is valuable, that we can make something from this. And then, and then in turn, yes, money is one of those primary, you know, mediums that we use to, in this, you know, current society. So, you know, when we open up and, also um, put things into circulation. That was another, like I'm saying, I'm just coming fresh off of doing all these month ahead readings and so many people were getting coins cards, pentacles cards that were like, you know, having to give to get and putting things into circulation. So when we hold on really rigidly and it's mine and yours and, and there's this separatism, that's when we find ourselves really tightly held to these things that are not going to be sustainable moving forward. So there's really this big message that I feel coming in there with a minor, you know, minor card, but it is the middle of the month getting into that eclipse season coming in at that point that, you know, we could be certainly seeing then the shift and change to something more major because then we have this significant energy coming in at the end of the month with the justice card. And it's for sure connected to this eclipse in Pisces because it is a Pisces, which is all about endings. And it is in conjunction with Neptune, which is all about culminations and endings. And we know that slowly but surely we're heading towards the year number eight as this year is culminating, the year of strength, which is all about culminations and endings, you know, nine. So I really feel that this is definitely speaking, you know, the other aspects of the four of pentacles. Like you said, what are we holding on to? What are we attached to that is not allowing this new energy to come through and with this full moon lunar eclipse it's going to be an illumination full moon is about illumination and it's telling us about okay now you can see how this which potentially had a lot of meaning had a lot of value and just like you said it doesn't mean to completely disregard all of it and say it's all garbage and it should have never happened but like you said how can we transfer you know, this experience, these wisdoms, the value that it offered, even though it is not in alignment anymore, it doesn't have the same value anymore, but how can it be in a sense, uh, I don't know, like renewed, remodeled, redone or something? Converted. I don't know. There's a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, tell us. I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so how, how we can do that to create this something different without, but it has to you know, it we have to allow it to be like in a sense fluid because if we want it to be just exactly the shape and form it is now, then it's part of the old. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's really cool because actually, and I have to grab it because it's right behind me, and it's like okay, Queen of the Moon wants to be here. Um, you know, the Queen of the Moon card that came up for us is acceptance. And look at those hands. I said, there's been this, this theme that's coming in about open and accepting and receiving, but also you're going to notice um, 
the dove in her hands that yeah, she's yeah. put it and then you'll see the doves that are all over this card. And this is also and number four. Number four. So this new framework, this new structure, um, the new money, the new, call it money. But what I mean is all of the commodity that we, the, this material that we have to build with that's been converted from those seeds, those old seeds or the new ones that are coming in. There's this acceptance, this coming together. And I'll say that, you know, about this card, because you do see the difference in the two hands, you know, whether there's lighter and darker, and then there's this sense of still coming together to create something that I take with this card rooted in peace. There's this peace offering because of all those doves, which again, I had to mention because they're right here with this detached mm -hmm. card, bringing in this sense of the offering of what we're leading with mm -hmm. when we come out of, and if you can see in the background, she's stepping forward from a more wintry scape into this new and so there's this moving also equinox we didn't mention uh from one season to another so once again <laughs> you know we've got that happening in september as well so at this time so there's just this whole sense of um and you know in the in the week ahead cards i brought up this old reel that i had made on instagram that had this song called piece of clay and the words are, you know, everybody wants somebody to be their own piece of clay. And so when I was talking about this material that we have to work with, <laughs> you know, it's just so connected in that there's this bringing forward your own piece of clay that you have to build with. I don't know exactly how this is going to help. I don't really know what you can make out of this broken old heart of mine, but I'm here and I'm accepting you know, that they were coming together in this new way. And yes, it's vulnerable. And, you know, we're putting ourselves out there because, you know, when you were saying about um, Dr. Joe Dispenza's teachings, it's like, you know, well, act as if then, because if you're going to act like you're the poor guy that had you know, rooted in lack, then that's what you're going to be attracting in versus I might not know what it's like to be rich. You know, I might not be in connected, be connected to that energy uh, on this, you know, in this lifetime or where I'm coming from that I feel I have to act as if to bring that energy forward, but I can connect with others and accept, you know, what is coming in for me to use to create from that place. It's very interesting because I just literally prior to recording this, I had a reading with a client and this is something that came through very strongly, uh, which is actually something that Teal Swan talked about in one of her mo more recent videos. I don't remember exactly which one it was, but it was something about uh, that which you want will not make you happy or it was something like that. So technically what she was explaining is because of the nature of things, of being human, whatever it is that you want, whatever it is desire, it's not going to make you happy. It's not going to bring you happiness because by the time you have it, you want something different. You know, it's going to make you happy for five minutes that, oh, yeah, I got it. You know, I got that guy. I got that house. I got the child. I got that whatever it is. Doesn't matter that vacation. But then we want the next thing. We want the next thing and the next thing because this is the nature of being human. We came here to experience life. And that's why we have to have a desire, because as we know, and you can observe it with, you know, older people, especially when they've been put in a care home, they very quickly will wither if they don't have nothing else to look forward to, if there is nothing more for them to want, to desire, then it just goes downhill from there because we came here to experience life, to want things. So technically what she was trying to explain was if you accept that whatever that you want is actually not going to make you happy, yeah, you know, it's going to give you an experience, like, because we have a reason why we desire what we want, you know, why we have this desire. So the soul wants to have a certain experience through this, whatever it is. But if you actually understand that that thing is not going to make you happy, how can you actually make yourself happy with or without that thing? And then mm -hmm. the thing will be just the part of the journey, part of the experience, but we will not be waiting to be happy until I have it. But actually mm -hmm. me knowing that, yeah, you know, it would be great to have it. It would be great to have this experience, but I know it's not going to make me happy or at least not in the long term. So how can I find tools to manipulate my frequency to make myself happy whenever I want, regardless of what I do or don't have. So I feel this is also, you know, a different ways of perceiving, you know, abundance and happiness and all these things, because we know that any of these things, unless they come from within, they are temporary. 
you know, they're temporary because any of these things can be taken away at every time everything's got expired and stuff like that. So and it's interesting that the cards say, card say acceptance. If we can accept <laughs> that this is just the nature of being human and having this experience that whatever, you will always desire something, but whatever you desire is not the thing that's going to make you happy. Only you can make yourself happy. Yeah, it's so perfect. These two cards are so connected in that way because it's detached. It's not intrinsically connected, your happiness with what you desire in a fleeting moment. So you see that. And then also, I do usually point out that these hands aren't actually touching. They're clearly connected. And there's this electric current between them, but they're not touching. So they are separate and yet together in that they are part and parcel of the whole of our experience. But... The focus, what we've been investing in up until now is misguided. And we've, we're becoming aware of that through the repeat of the traumas and the coming around again of these things by continuing to do the same old, same old and expecting different results that when we put our focus on these material things or these fleeting desires or whatever they are, and then I'll be happy then inevitably we're not happy. Then you have the letdown of, well, I'm not happy. And when am I going to be happy? And, you know, it just takes on this life of its own. So there's this detachment from that. And I think it's really powerful that this is the justice card because there's this truth coming in, like this really, this, this illumination, as you said, of through the eclipse, that there's this sense of we're now really getting very clear on what has been out of balance mm. um, that has had to get so out of balance in order to like really get attention from more than, than not, you know, the people who are coming online to be able to see that there's this clear um, need to detach from those things that we've been holding on so tightly to that we're now invited to really kind of release that hold and reinvest it. Like I said, it's not all for nothing. And that's the thing where I think we can get caught up in the like mental health of it all, because it's like, woulda, coulda, shoulda all the time I wasted. Like once I realize maybe the air of, you know, how I was approaching something. Now I have to spend a whole time like marinating in like my disappointment versus being able to, approach it from that more detached place from a, but, but with love and compassion for the version of me that was having that experience and that that actually all of that was necessary for me to get where I am now to have this awareness to have these nuggets these coins of wisdom that I have through the experiences that I can then now take to create something new from there it's so funny that uh, the one example that just came to me to share was like when I worked on a cruise ship and I always dreamt about going to like, you know, Maldives and French Polynesia and all this paradise and stuff. <laughs> and it's so ironic because when I actually was to join one of my first contract, I was meant to join in Alaska. And I was like, Alaska? No, thank you. I don't want to go to Alaska. I don't want to be cold. You know, I want to go to Maldives. <laughs> Fast forward a few, few years later, I did manage to go to Maldives and to French Polynesia and Seychelles. And I'm very grateful, very fortunate that I had that opportunity, but it wasn't what I expected. It wasn't this, you know, that, that's what I mean. You know, like we think all this money, all this paradise is going to make you happy. But actually, no, it was boring. Unless you go there on honeymoon with your husband, you know, just husband, right? It's great because you have each other to occupy your time with. But apart from that, it, it is quite boring. There's not that much to do. It's beautiful, but that's it, you know, mm -hmm. not ditching, you know, these beautiful paradises, because if you just want to switch off and do nothing, it's perfect. But then eventually I did manage to go to Alaska and I was completely detached because I was like, Alaska, you know, seriously. And it was one of the best uh, itineraries I had ever experienced because of the aliveness of the place, the unlimited potential of what it offers and how it challenges you as a human, how it challenges the limitations. You know, when you even when I was traveling, I would say to people, I'm in Alaska and I would say, oh, isn't it freezing cold? And I'm actually, no, it's summer, it's, it's warm. So that's what I mean. We have a certain perception of certain places. We have it labeled and boxed in a box. Seychelles, yeah, I'll take that. Alaska, no thanks. You know, it's cold and there are bears and I don't like it. But actually you might be very surprised. And this is just a silly example, but I'm just trying to show, share my ignorance due to conditioning that I've experienced that, oh yeah, if you want to be like rich people, you go to Maldives, you know, you don't go to Alaska, no. <laughs> 
And actually I had, and this is just a personal experience. I'm not saying it would be the same for everyone or it was the same for everyone if you managed to travel to these places, but I really had to uh, like uh, eat my humble pie because Mm -hmm. then, you know, I would want to go back to Alaska, but you know, I didn't get the opportunity again, but I actually realized that that those things that we dismiss as, oh, this is just the mundane or something boring or something, they might surprise you just how much richness and value is hiding within these things that we put under the umbrella of this is this is not what I want this is boring you know yeah that's that's it's a great example and I, and there's so much more to that is like the things that are hiding under there these these treasures and again these don't don't negate you know a gift because of how it's packaged you know and so even the, the again the challenges and the difficult things or the places and and tasks and stuff we have to do that we really don't want to have to do um you know there's something in there for us you know there's there's a goodie there's a nugget there's a coin there's something that we can then reinvest right so there's this sense of all of that being highlighted too well, I don't know. Tax return, probably. I don't <laughs> agree. <laughs> Are you still looking to find the gold in there? <laughs> I think I'll be looking for the rest of my life. <laughs> they say if you if you can flip your your perspective, like, and when you pay a bill, like, to rejoice and celebrate that you paid that bill, you bring in, you know, you're circulating the money and you're grateful that you have the means to do that. And then, you know, and Hey, I I've seen it work. Um, but also we can, we can joke about it because I think I, think I could be much more grateful and happy for the, uh, you know, the, the turning of the money around and stuff. If I pay someone else to do the hustle of the accountancy for me, you know, then I yeah. think I'll be just very happy to pass on the check and pay just as long as somebody else has to have the headache of going through all the numbers. Yeah. Well, like I said, not not everything is in my wheelhouse. I don't want to be the leader of everything, okay? And anything that involves money and transactions and that kind of stuff, have at it. I I, I don't need to be the leader. But like you keep saying, don't yuck somebody else's yum. Somebody loves accountancy. And I am so grateful there exist people who do. Yeah, that they have just a natural gift. And that's the thing. When we all come together and we bring our own unique gifts to the table, another card that came up this week, Six of Pentacles, how we are growing, Mm -hmm. where we each come to the table with our own unique gifts and talents and traumas and experiences and perceptions and all of it, what we can create from that. And we're starting to see this glimpse of what's possible that's coming in. And so September is a, a really powerful month for really, really turning on those engines to pivot toward full steam ahead with those energies being ushered in. I think that's literally what it is, you know, because as I keep sharing, and as I said, people are welcome to challenge me on that. uh, To me, Virgo is the hero's journey, the human's journey. Once when I was channeling, spirit filled in with me and said, it's a human's journey. You know, the hero's Mm -hmm. journey, human's journey, I think they're interconnected. But now being in a Virgo season and seeding these potencies, and I know you you were tapping into the potency of this new moon, it is creating a huge shift that is going to, yes, grow over time. But it's like, because Virgo is all about this learning and adjusting, step-by-step process, small changes, just like, you know, just like you like sharing that, okay, well, if you just take the 10 minutes walk a day, or if you just, I don't know, whatever, meditate for this five minutes a day, five minutes a day, seriously, everybody can find five minutes. In one month, that five minutes a day meditation would have changed your life. Maybe not drastically, but one year, you know, so this is Virgo. Small adjustments, small adjustments that you can keep integrating into your life and see them grow and bloom you know something simple and easy practical that is not like oh yeah i'm starting a gym regime and i'm gonna go for an hour every day Mm, that's gonna you know get boring very quickly but if you do something simple that you enjoy and you can practically apply into your everyday reality over the time virgo over the time you know because it's the taurus virgo capricorn the path to self-mastery foundation repeating you know virgo trial and error trial and error and that's why they say there is no such a thing as mistake just like you said there is just you know opportunity for wisdom learning you know uh discernment so yeah that eventually will take you to self-mastery but it takes time 
Yeah. One coin at a time. So it's like each one of those is a deposit into that bank that then pays dividends on the other end. So it's all, it's carrying through that symbolism throughout. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just perfect. I think this, yeah. And you know, with this um, eclipse season and we're going to have our last eclipse in Libra uh, because the one in spring will be Virgo Aries. So this will be our last Libra eclipse, which of course is next month. So that's for another conversation, but it's interesting that we're going to end this month with this justice card, which represents Libra. And it is already in Libra season. Equinox will be already gone. Uh, well, I mean, the end of the month is Equinox and then it's the Libra season. And then we have the new moon in Libra on October 2nd. And that is about seeding this <laughs> new way of justice. The, the 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 balancing of the scales but as i said there will be no full moon in libra uh, like an eclipse there will be a full moon in libra of course there will be in april but it will not be an eclipse so we will see you know like if you want to think about full moon in libra on a north node then we have to wait nine years if you're thinking about full moon on a south node just like we have now new moon on a south node that will be next 18 19 years so technically by the time Pluto is done with uh you know with with his transit through Aquarius so this is what I mean what we are seeing now in this Virgo season you will not see the result in spring <laughs> you will yeah. see where this direction is taking us or what it means for you based on the choice based on the seeds you planted what is going to grow out of it but you will not see the tree just yet you know this these are cycles that we seed in for decades yet to come so it's like you know the saying that many times we you know used about that we might not see the tree we might not be sitting in the shadow of these trees that we are planting but you know maybe in next lifetime but who knows perhaps in this one you never know because things are speeding up but uh yeah it's it is a very po powerful potent energy we are playing with at the moment because uh the fruits of this seeding will be growing over the time and they will be here to stay yeah. So it's even more, more highlighting the fact that, you know, not to put your happiness contingent upon seeing those seeds, because that's not what it's about. And, and perhaps when you have that shift in your mindset, it makes it much easier because then you're just, you're, you're sowing those seeds and you're tending to them simply for the fact that, it's coming from a genuine place of sharing the love, you know, which is where we started because we're, we're seeding that for the future and I can still have joy and happiness and fulfillment all the while. It's not going to come from that. So when I'm able to detach and see those two things separate and yet the connected as one, then perhaps on that other side, you know, it will be smoother and easier. Cause I'm saying that to myself too, because, you know, often we feel like I put this work in, I want to see the results. I want to know that it's tangible. And oftentimes we don't always get to see the way that we're impacting things in any direction. And so when to know that, to trust that what you're putting out into the world is coming from a genuine place of love and intention, then you know, you can continue to be a leader in, in, in the knowing that that is for something that is coming into the future, but here and now, you know, really tapping into our happiness and joy from the inside out. And this is how we redefine in the Virgo archetype, because it is not, and it has never been about perfection. It's been about the journey. It's mm -hmm. a journey, not the final result, because there is no end, you know, like you, you are very likely to come back, <laughs> you know, so yeah. there is no end, don't worry about it. But the other aspect of, of it was like, you know, like, uh, we like you said, we, we do, we're doing it from our heart. What for? Well, for the children, you know, like whether yours or somebody else's for the future of humanity, the children and the children's children and their children, you know, these that will keep the humanity going because... I I don't for a second believe that humanity is going to be, you know, like is distinguished, you know, like is going to be gone from the, I don't believe that, you know, but we do have to obviously change the way we are and how we, you know, exist, how we, um, you know, how we interact with one another, all the rest of it. But I don't believe that humanity is done, you know, it's just going to evolve, right? So we are doing it for these children, just like our ancestors you know, fought and prayed and hoped and trusted that 
us will be born at some point us here you know like hello you know like how much uh, there has been done and experience and sacrifice but we don't need to sacrifice anymore because the sacrifice just creates more sacrifice so we are healing and reclaiming our power to create this new foundation new structure for these children yet to come that's going to take humanity in a completely different direction yeah. And yet, that is also this detachment. We have to detach from what exactly that's going to look like because she's letting the dove go. <laughs> you know, like, just go wherever you're going, right? So, yeah, so, yeah, it's it's just very profound. These cards are just so deep. They always come yeah. up with deep messages. <laughs> I know, as, as simple as they are, they're always so deep. And we can always keep going because you're already giving me more stuff. But I'm like, ah, okay, I know. It's like taking us down all these different places. <laughs> But I think that these are some pretty powerful messages for September. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that we have a time restriction on our heads because yes. back to school, children will be waiting for a bit. Yes. Getting, getting all the things done, getting to all of it. But I'm super glad that we were able to carve out this yeah, time. Me too. To, and the to next time it will be in person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yay. I know. <laughs> so I think. So Marisa, tell people about all your September offerings, please. Oh my goodness. It's, we just hit the ground running. So I'm still in the process of the September empowerment pack. So there is still time if you want to come in for the collection of three readings for the month, your month ahead energy reading, which is very similar to this, but we also weave in some other elements and, and aspects we can work with this month personal messages for you. And then I also have the, the new moon reading available a la carte. So if you just want to get all of the messages that were built around this acceptance card and a six card spread that I did, um, that is available as well. New moon empowerment and uh, personal card pulls there too. And then um, the share cast on the Marco Polo app, the empowerment share cast is up and running. I'm doing um, free card pulls this week and uh, all of our current collective messages are playing there now. And also Marisa will be getting her Equinox uh, readings ready too. Yes. Oh, got to put that's on my list. <laughs> we'll have readings for Equinox. Thank you for the reminder. Um, I have both um, autumn, Equinox and spring. So wherever you are in the world and your preference, um, that's always a fun one, too. You covered. <laughs> Marisa's yeah. got you covered. We got you covered worldwide. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And for me, everybody knows, I guess, but if you're watching this, that you can find me on uh, the social media, Moonlight Soul 369, and also on my website, moonlightsoul369.com. So once again, thank you so much, Marisa. It was great, even though it was different, but I enjoyed it. Me too. Thank and you. I look forward to seeing you in person in a couple of weeks. Yay. <laughs> so excited. Until yeah. next time, everybody have a great time. Bye.